Hi, I'm Scott. Welcome to Scott Sin Stuff. Today we're going to be talking about using your Montage or Modi X to play backing tracks live while you accompany and play individual parts and different parts over top. How you can do that easily. Coming up next. <music> Okay, so how this came about, a good friend of mine who actually bought my old Modi X uh, when I got my montage wants to use it to play live with his band uh, and he wants to have tracks in the background. So typically how he works, he has his produced multi-tracks and then he will delete, you know, the vocals out of it, the backing vocals, uh, guitar, uh, and then whatever lead part that he wants to play. So the only tracks remaining are the, the actual backing tracks that are going to be used in the actual track. So what he wants to do is then to be able to play different sounds on top of that while the track is playing. And you could be playing different, um, you know, maybe at the beginning of the track you're playing an organ and then later on you're playing a, a pad or something. So I'm going to show how you go about doing that on the Montage and Modi X uh, and it's, it's really easy to do this and it's, it's really built for it. Now normally I would take my magic little device here and plug it into my Montage so I could capture the screen digitally and actually put it right in the video so you could see it clearly. Unfortunately what we're going to do, be doing here is playing audio off a USB key which means the USB port I would normally plug that into is already being used, so I can't do that. Instead, I'm going to point a camera at the screen and we'll make the best of it. Okay, so the first thing you need to know is the tracks you want to have WAV files. Ideally, you want them 44.1, 16-bit. If you put it in a different format, 24-bit or something, they will not play. The Modi X and Montage won't recognize them. So you want 44, 16 WAV files, and then we'll go about and construct a couple live set entries for two different tracks and demonstrate how you would go about doing this. Okay, so let's say for our first track, we are going to be using, I don't know, a, let's say some kind of keyboard sound. Uh, this is fine. So we've got a, a electric piano, single part on that. And then uh, we're also going to add now we're going to add a second sound in here, and because we just want it in that one part, I want to search just for single sounds, not multi-part sounds. So let's say um, we're also, for this one, we're going to be looking for a synth lead, some kind of sound like that, whatever that sound is. And then over here, we're going to be wanting a pad. And let's see... Uh that's fine, we'll use that pad there. Okay, so now we have our three sounds that we're gonna be using to play during this song. However, if we leave it like right now, all three are playing at once. That's not what we want. So what we wanna do is we're gonna hit mute on these two. Now we're just gonna get this one playing. So we're gonna save that into a scene. And the way we're gonna do that is by holding down the shift button and then pressing one of these scene buttons. So I'm gonna press shift and scene one and now it's stored this scene for these sounds into scene one. For scene two, we're gonna unmute the second one. So now I'll press shift and scene two, and it stored that. And now shift and scene three, and it stored that one. So now if I go into the different scenes, you can see it actually mutes the different pieces. So as I'm pressing my scene buttons over here, you can see it's gonna select which of my tracks is gonna be unmuted. Now it could do more than that, I could have maybe two of these tracks unmuted for one scene, or maybe I have drum sounding for one scene, or I could have my levels different. I mean, any of these settings that make up the performance, you could have some having reverb and some not, some with echo, whatever. You basically create this performance, save it as a scene. Modify the, the settings of the performance, save it as a scene. That gives you quick access to different versions of the same performance just by pressing scene. So if you listen now, here's, Here's my scene one, scene two, and scene three. Very nice. All right, so now let's save this before we do go any further. So we're gonna hit store, and then we're gonna say store as new performance, and we'll call this test one. 
Okay, now we want to associate our backing track. So we're going to take play record and click on that. And then we want to click up here and load and here's the USB stick. If you don't have the USB stick selected, you can just click on it up here. And in this area, you'll see the different tracks that you can load. I've just got a few of my tracks in here that I can pick from. So here's the track that is going to be our backing track for this performance. So now we want to store this into a live set because the live set is where the association between this backing track and the performance occurs. So over here, I'm going to press shift and live set. And what happens when we do that is it gives us a place that we can store it. So I'm just going to tap on that. So now we've stored our test one in that area right there. So now we're going to start over again and let's uh, pick, I don't know, a different keyboard. Electric harpsichord, very nice. That's gonna be, actually let's pick one with um, more than one part to it. So let's say, uh, so let's pick one this time that has a, a couple different parts. I think um, if we get rid of the single here and we can pick uh, CFX concert. Let's see what that has in there. Okay, so we've got four parts in here. Very nice piano there. Now we're going to add um, now we're going to select single in here again. We don't have to, but it makes it easier to demonstrate. Uh, we're going to put in uh, a CPNI. Let's not use a piano. Let's use an organ. So we've got this type of organ here. And let's use that one. And there's our organ, our tone wheel. And then let's add in um, oh, synthesizer sound, whatever that is. So now we've got these parts. I'm going to do the exact same thing. Now, I, you have eight scenes to pick from. I'm just going to use the three for brevity here. So for this one, for scene one, I'm going to mute one and two. So we will save that into one. And then for scene two, we will unmute that one. And then for scene three, we will unmute that one. So let's give that a try and see what it sounds like. The first scene we have is a piano. The second scene is the organ. And the third scene is whatever that sound is. All right, so now we're gonna store that and we will store it as a new performance. We'll call it uh, test two. And now we need to pick our backing track. So we'll go to play and record up here to load and we'll pick a bit different backing track this time. And once again, we will then click shift live set and pick where we're gonna send it. Now we're done. So now let's test this. I'll click test one and as I do, you can see it brings up the backing the name of the backing track file at the bottom there. And if I hit scene one, we have our EP, scene two, our solo sound scene three our pad and if I hit play it's now playing the backing track I can play the EP I can play the sound or pad or whatever I want on top of the backing track and I as I change scenes I can change the sounds that I'm playing over top when I'm done that song I just hit two changes that hit play the new one starts playing and here's my sound there's my organ there's my synth sound and my piano. So it's really quite simple. You can see what I've done here. I've got all these different sounds associated with each of these uh, uh, live set performances. Now I don't have to use the scene keys to change sounds like that if I don't want to. Let's say I have uh, the piano stage here, the CFX stage here. So right now this piano plays across the entire keyboard. What I can do is I can click the upper right here, it's set to G8. Now if I press keyboard and I just play a note, let's play a, a D above middle C. Now this is set to D3. So if we go back, you can see all the keys above that don't play anything. So now we can add a different sound and this time we're gonna add a toy piano. And the lower range for the toy piano, we will start at the D above C. So now you can, oops, actually, I need to do it one higher. 
because I actually that's where I put the other one. Fine. Okay, so now if I play up to that note, I get the piano. But as soon as I play one note higher, I get the toy piano. And if I actually bring this one down a little ways, so they overlap in the middle, you get both. And then it switches just to the upper. So you could have different sounds mapped across the keyboard so that you have you don't have to hit the scene keys to change sounds, you just have to move your hand to a different place on the keyboard. Now, let's say that we wanted a pia the piano to be you know, most of the keyboard because we use that for almost everything. So let's say we had the piano all the way up to, uh, oh, I don't know, B4. So now the piano goes all the way up high and we want this toy keyboard up above that. So we'll start that at C5. So now the piano goes up to here and the toy piano starts here. But we're saying, oh, this sounds now too high. It, 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 it's, we want this to play lower. So all we have to do is go into here and edit that and select pitch filter. And then here's our note shift. And let's say we shift that down to minus 24. That's two octaves. So here's what it sounds like before and then we can bring it down two octaves. So even though I'm playing at the top end of the keyboard, it's not playing really, really high. So that's another way that you can get multiple sounds that you can play easily and quickly over top of a backing track. Well, that's it. I hope everything you saw here was useful and that you learned something. If you did like what you saw, please click the thumbs up and then click on subscribe and that little notification bell that gives you a notification every time we post one of these videos. If you have any comments, complaints, suggestions, corrections, please post them in the comment section below. I definitely do read all those. Thanks for watching.